You got used to browsing the web, playing games, and connecting with your friends on social media, all at the convenience of the iPhone in your pocket. But what if I were to tell you that there were many more hidden uses inside it? Backtap Have you ever noticed that fancy Apple logo on the back of your iPhone? If you've got a cover on, go ahead and pull it off so you can check it out. Okay, you're now probably thinking, there's nothing secret about this, the obvious brand logo on my iPhone. Sure, it might not seem so special, but did you know that it's more than just a handsome decoration? It's also, as a matter of fact, a button. Don't believe me? Give it a try. But before you go tapping at it like you're using your phone backward, you'll need to adjust your settings. There's a reason this handy feature is considered a secret. First, pull up your settings, tap on Accessibility, and then the Touch menu, and navigate your way to the very bottom of the list, where you'll find the Back Tap button. Found it? Great! You can choose the Double Tap or Triple Tap option, whichever you prefer, and best of all, you'll have a multitude of options to choose from. You can have your Back Tap feature take a photo with your camera app, alert Siri, switch apps, and even take a screenshot. It'll make things a lot easier than performing finger gymnastics when you need to take a screenshot. Adjust Siri's pronunciations. Have you ever asked Siri to call a friend? Maybe you've said, Siri, uh -huh. call Hermione, only for Siri to comply with calling Hermione. Okay, you may not have Harry Potter's best friend in your contacts list, but we can all agree it's not the easiest name to pronounce. Siri might be one of the most intelligent digital assistants in the smartphone game, and sometimes a bit of a smarty pants. But iPhone's companion can often struggle to pronounce even the most common names. If this bothers you, then you'd be delighted to hear you can actually correct Siri's pronunciations. The simplest way is to catch Siri in the act and say, that's not how you pronounce. It will prompt Siri to ask for the correct pronunciation for each name, first, middle, and last, or the name of a place if it's not for a person. Once you've given it, Siri will generate some options, and all you have to do is pick the correct one. If your digital best friend is still struggling, it might help to spell it out. Open your contacts, select the person Siri is struggling to pronounce, and choose Edit. You can add the correct pronunciation in the notes section using phonetic spelling and click pronunciation spelling to train Siri to get it right. Even a super smart digital assistant needs some help sometimes. Hey Siri, it's Leviosa, not Leviosar. Measure app. Is a toolkit too clunky to carry around? Or maybe you've forgotten which drawer you placed the measuring tape in. That's okay iPhone has got some more secrets that will help you out. Did you know that iPhone has a few tools in its arsenal that will serve your carpentry needs? Take the Measure app, for instance. You no longer need that long, awkward-to-use floppy tape to get a measurement on your coffee table, bookshelf, or couch. The app uses augmented reality to measure objects around you using your phone's camera. The first thing you'll need to do is move your phone around so the app can analyze the area you intend to measure. You'll eventually find a white circle with a dot in the middle of your screen. From there, it's not so different from an actual measuring tape. Just line up the dot with the corner of the object you want to measure and trace it to where you want the measurement to end. If you're a builder, you might want to stick to the physical tape for more accurate measurement. This option isn't necessarily for the professionals. But the app is excellent for getting a rough estimate. The Measure app can also be used as a level. Simply switch over to the Level tab in your app and place your phone on the surface where you want to get a reading. When you get a green screen and a zero reading, your surface is nice and level. It's not so different from the Compass app's Level feature, so you might have had some bad experiences with this feature before. With your new digital toolbox, your iPhone will make you the handiest person in the house. Create Custom Vibration 
We all live pretty fast-paced and busy lives these days. And whether we're at work, in a movie, or at school, more often than not, we have our iPhone set to vibrate. Sure, there are some cool ringtones to choose from, but there aren't many occasions where a sudden tune coming from our pocket wouldn't distract those around us. Or worse yet, it leads to our phone being confiscated by a disgruntled employer or teacher. Luckily, there are plenty of vibration options to choose from. You probably have various ones for different occasions and different contacts. None of those settings quite your jam? Apple has a solution to this too. Another hidden feature in the iPhone is creating a custom vibration for your alerts. If you want to feel the beat to your favorite song when your best friend calls or texts, or when it's time to wake up in the morning, you create that pattern on your iPhone. Once again, you'll need to go into those handy settings, then in Sound and Haptics, choose the tone you'd like to customize. Tap Vibration. Then, Create New Vibration. The next step is to create those sweet vibrations like a soundless DJ by tapping your finger on the screen until you have the silent rhythm you're happy with. Now you've got a vibrate option to your liking. It might even make the early morning wake-up calls just a little more pleasant. Just like the Beach Boys, you'll be picking up good vibrations. Trackpad with smartphones, we no longer need two hands to use a keyboard. All you need is one good thumb. Yet, it can still prove a little tedious sometimes as typos are easy to make, and all your characters can't fit all at once on that crammed keyboard at the bottom of your phone screen. You might be typing out a long body of text, only to realize you left out the R out of the word drive a few sentences back, which might give your friends the wrong idea about what you're doing. It can be a fiddly task to fix it, and it's often easiest to delete the entire word and write it all over again. Or so it may seem. If you're a stickler for good grammar in your text messages, you might want to shift your keyboard into trackpad mode for easier editing. That's right, another hidden gem on your iPhone. It's easy to access too. All you have to do is hold your finger on the space bar. All the other keys will gray out and you'll be able to move the cursor to wherever it needs to go. Then, lift your finger off the spacebar to continue typing. Another tedium to writing on that tiny iPhone keyboard is shifting tabs to use numbers and symbols. It may not seem like much, but it's sure to be a little frustrating when you have to jump back and forth multiple times in the same message. However, there is another hidden feature in your iPhone's keyboard that will alleviate this. Hold it down instead of tapping on the numeric 1-2-3 tab, and it will bring up the Numbers and Symbols tab. As long as you're holding it, the tab will remain open to pick your character, and releasing will return you to letters. Soon, you'll be fast enough to write a novel on your smartphone. Did you ever tie a string between two plastic cups so you could talk to your friend from opposite ends of your home? It may have seemed pretty cool at the time, but that plastic cup couldn't tell you the weather or let you send an email, right? Indeed, we've come a long way since the string telephone. In fact, can you even imagine life before smartphones? They have become almost like our clothes or the shoes we walk in. It's almost our consistent accessory. Now you know some of these handy secrets and you'll be an iPhone Pro. However, if these secrets aren't for you, there's always the string telephone. At least it won't run out of charge. Yep, moving objects through a door when it keeps closing is super annoying. So instead, tie a rubber band around the handle on each side of the door so that it crosses over the latch. The latch then won't be able to pop out, and the door won't lock shut. To check whether your bed sheets are fully dried, take a mirror and place it underneath. Leave it there for around 5 minutes, and if it steams up, it means the sheets are still damp. A damp bed can be a breeding ground for mold and other nasty fungi. You can paint the end of your keys with different colored nail polish so that you can easily identify which key is which. In order to pour the perfect amount of oil or salad dressing, poke holes in the foil seal rather than removing it completely. This prevents a big amount rushing out quickly. To prevent band-aids from slipping off your finger, cut a line on either side. 
This will create four smaller sticky strips rather than one large one, and it will be much easier to secure. If you enter a public restroom and see a red Solo cup someone put under the seat, better choose another booth. It means there's no toilet paper in this one. The red cup is a frequent replacement for a toilet paper hub, which is also put under the seat for the same reason. Speaking of restrooms, almost any public toilet has a large gap between the floor and the door. The reason for such a zero-privacy thing is to actually minimize the level of privacy and comfort so that people won't stay there long and there'd be no lines. It's also to clean and safer if some emergency occurs. Forgot to put your drink in the fridge? Wrap a wet paper towel around it and put it in the freezer. In just 15 minutes, your drink will be ice cold. Instead of filling your purse or wallet with store loyalty cards, you can take a photo of them. Just take one snap of the barcode, as well as a picture of the front so you know which card it is. Then, when you visit the store, just scan the barcode on your phone to collect your points. If you're using your phone to watch something and are tired of propping it up and having it fall back down, try using your sunglasses. Simply place them upside down and use the parts that go around your ears to hold the phone in place. Now, if you don't have the correct size coin to put in your shopping cart next time you go to the supermarket, you can use your key instead. If you have a key with a rounded end, you can insert that where the coin would go and the cart should unlock. If you're struggling to get your taco shells to stay in place, use a muffin tray. Flip the tray upside down, spray it with oil, and place your tortillas in the gap. Cook them for around 10 minutes at 700 degrees Fahrenheit for the perfect crispy taco shell. You can use a water bottle to separate egg yolks. Hold the bottle over the yolk and squeeze it to suck the yolk up. Drop it into a separate bowl and you're good to go. Next time you're struggling to clean your ceiling fan, use a pillowcase. Slide the pillowcase over each blade to wipe off the dust. This way, excess dust is caught inside the pillowcase and won't rain down on you. To properly clean your blender, fill it with soap and hot water. Switch it on for around 10 seconds and let the swirling water do the hard work. Then just rinse it off and it's clean. Put down a strip of masking tape before nailing into plaster walls. The tape should stop the plaster from flaking or spreading dust all over the floor. If your shoes smell bad, put a few dry tea bags into the shoe. The tea bags will absorb the smell. Try using toothpaste to remove small scratches on furniture. Rub a peanut size amount on the scratch in a circular motion until the scratch buffs out. Then wipe it with a damp cloth and voila! Drill a couple of small holes in the bottom of your trash can to stop the bag getting stuck when you pull it out. The holes stop the vacuum-like effect that keeps the bag pinned down. You can easily remove the sticky residue from jars using cooking oil. Soak a cotton pad in some oil, then rub it on the sticky area. Allow it to sit for a few minutes, then it should wipe away easily. Now, you can use hair conditioner to make that new wool sweater less itchy. Just soak it in lukewarm water with a couple of tablespoons of conditioner and leave it for 15 minutes. Then just dry it and your sweater will be much softer. An odor on your fingers can be removed with some minty toothpaste. Rub them together with toothpaste, then rinse them clean. It'll help get rid of the odor and act as a light scrub, too. Now, before you throw out those old sneakers, arm yourself with an old toothbrush and a little toothpaste. Work the paste into the dirty spots and leave it for at least 10 minutes. Wipe it off with a damp cloth and repeat if it didn't do it right the first time. Be careful with color toothpaste, it may leave stains. Washing your clothes on a low heat or even better, a cold wash, will make them last twice as long. Drying them on the line, if possible, will also make the material last longer than if you used a dryer. Metal zippers are very durable but they'll snag more than other kinds of zippers. Just gently rub a bar of soap over the teeth of both sides of the zipper. The residue will help lubricate it, making it easier to slide open and closed. When you can't squeeze any more toothpaste out of your tube, just cut the end off. This will allow you to get what's left inside onto your toothbrush in a pinch. 
If there's enough for more than one use, place it in a plastic bag for later. Freezing candles before use can make them burn a lot slower. This will cool the wax right down and extend its melting time. A pack of cotton pads has those strings on it so that we can hang it on some hook or holder. And no, there's no need to untighten and tighten the pack again. Look at the bottom of the pack. It has a perforated line. Tear along it, and now you're good to pull out a cotton pad. If you've ever tasted a Nintendo cartridge, you'll confirm that, yes, they taste revolting, leaving a sour, bitterish aftertaste in your mouth. They're covered with denatonium benzoate, one of the most disgusting flavors known. Actually, this taste is kind of a hidden function. It prevents people from swallowing those cartridges. Headrests in a car are about comfort, and detachable headrests are about safety. If you pull the headrest out of the seat, you'll see two bars, which are quite sturdy. If you ever get locked or trapped in a car, you can get out of there smashing the window with these bars. Rough edges on the dimes aren't just about design. The coins used to be made of precious metals to show their real value. People would shave off the edges, spending the shaven coins with the same value, and melt the edges to new coins. To avoid it, minters added that pattern so people could tell if someone cut that coin before. That black grate on a microwave isn't just some fancy decoration. It's called a Faraday shield, and it prevents the rays from escaping the microwave. It also speeds up the heating, so you could enjoy yesterday's leftovers faster. A triple handle on a jerry can is there to make it easier for two people to carry it and distribute the fuel evenly. Gas cans often have a second hole that actually needs to be uncapped, too, before you pour the gas. The air passage will prevent it from pouring out, so no more fuel waste. Tires on the landing gear don't burst because they're designed for a load that's four to five times as great as they experience during landing. The wheel itself might break, but the tire won't burst. This little tip based on people's psychology can help you choose the fastest line at the airport. If there are several lines at check-in, opt for the left one. It's believed that you'll get to the counter more quickly this way. Most people are right-handed and intuitively choose the right side. Your skin usually becomes a bit dry during the flight. This happens because of low humidity levels in the cabin. Bring a good moisturizer with you to keep your skin hydrated on board. Do you know that airplane pilots always eat different meals before a flight? This way, if one of them gets food poisoning, the other will be able to take control of the plane. Airplane tray tables are some of the dirtiest surfaces in the cabin, so make sure to wash your hands frequently. And clean that table with an antibacterial wipe to get rid of all those bacteria living there. If you're sitting in an aisle seat, you can have more space to stretch your legs out. Just push the button on the underside of the outermost armrest. This will move the armrest up, giving you more space for your legs and preventing the armrest from jabbing into your side. Here's a reason why they turn the lights off in the cabin. Passengers need to get used to the darkness in case an emergency landing happens at night. This way, their eyes are already used to the absence of light, which makes it easier to evacuate. Flight attendants ask you to open window shades so they can see what's happening outside. This way, they can choose the best way to evacuate passengers in case of an emergency. Almost all passenger planes are white since this color best reflects the sun's rays and prevents the plane from heating up. Another good reason is that white paint is cheaper. Also, workers and engineers can easily notice any damage on a white surface. It's better to avoid making important decisions during a flight. Your brain doesn't get enough oxygen at such heights. This negatively affects its functioning. Chewing gum, hard candies, and mints can help you to avoid this annoying ear popping during takeoff and landing, but not because of the candy itself. You feel better thanks to the process of swallowing. Yawning helps too. As for the gum, it also helps get rid of that bad breath caused by the thin air at high altitudes, which pulls moisture right out of your body. Dry air can make you feel as if you're coming down with a cold. The air in the cabin dries out your nose and throat as if you have symptoms of a cold. These symptoms usually go away right after landing. 
The water they use to make coffee and tea on board isn't always clean enough. Yeah, many companies use very good water filters now, but still, it's better to ask for bottled water if you're thirsty. That tiny triangle on the aircraft wall over your seat means a lot for flight attendants. These triangles mark the windows through which you can see flashing indicators. Those signal the retraction of the landing gears and the closing of the flaps. Let's say the pilots find out there's some problem. In that case, a flight attendant rushes to the necessary window to check what's happening. But for passengers, this is just the best place for photos, since you can see the wings perfectly. Seats in the middle of the cabin above the wings are the best for you if you have motion sickness. This area is more balanced and shakes the least during turbulence. If you tend to get nervous during the flight, do some physical exercise not long before boarding the plane. A little workout helps lower your stress levels and makes your body release endorphins, the happiness hormones. Also, this physical activity compensates for the hours you spend sitting still. The turbines are located under the wings since this makes it cheaper, faster, and easier to service the engines. Previously, they used to be placed in the tail. It required expensive equipment and much more time to repair. When they started installing the engines below the wings, ticket prices went down. Imagine you're flying in a hot air balloon. See the burner system installed under the gas bag, also called the envelope? It heats the air inside, which makes the balloon go up. So, turbulence is the same hot air but created by nature. When the air heats up, it rises a plane. When it becomes cooler, the aircraft goes down. And passengers feel as if they're riding a roller coaster. A stream of hot air left by another plane can also cause turbulence. It's common for most flights, but usually, turbulence is so light that passengers don't feel it. Do you know that planes can fly even after one engine fails? Pilots can control such emergency situations and land the aircraft safely. Passengers may feel a slight tilt during the flight, but in most cases, they don't even know the plane is flying with only one engine. Your eyes get oxygen straight from the air. It's not delivered by the blood. So your eyes can feel somewhat dry during the flight. Put eye drops in your bag. They'll help you keep your eyes moist. It's forbidden to carry large volumes of liquids on board because some hazardous substances can easily dissolve in water. If a plane has to land on water, its wings become a life-saving pillow. Empty fuel tanks help the aircraft stay afloat too. By the way, it can be from 10 minutes to 60 hours before the plane sinks. It all depends on the model, weather conditions, and the pilot's skills. Those smiling flight attendants you meet when you get into the cabin usually hide their hands behind their backs. They're counting people entering the plane to make sure that all passengers are on board. Despite all the words people say about airplane food, it's not actually so bad. The problem is your sense of taste. It's not so acute since the air in the cabin makes your mouth dry. It also dulls your sense of smell. That's why airlines add a lot of spices and salt to their meals. Is it true that your hair grows faster during the flight? Not really. Scientists haven't managed to prove it. This myth appeared in the first part of the 20th century when some passengers noticed that their stubble had grown longer during the flight. It's normal for people to get headaches during the flight, especially right after takeoff. You climb to an altitude higher than Mount Everest within about 10 minutes. These changes happen too fast for your body to adjust. Seatbelts on planes stretch across your stomach to save you from getting slammed against the ceiling in case of turbulence. When it happens, the aircraft starts moving up and down, and your waist belt holds you securely. And seatbelts in cars protect people from horizontal collisions. Airplanes have special protection from lightning. Even if it strikes, passengers won't feel it. Planes are covered with an aluminum coating that conducts electric current, but doesn't let it get inside the plane. Electronics and fuel tanks also have extra protection. Plane seats are so uncomfortable because airlines try to fit the maximum number of passengers on the plane. That's why there's so little space between seats. Two additional rows means 12 more passengers. Also, companies make airplane seats lighter to save on fuel costs. Even seemingly insignificant extra weight can cost an airline thousands of dollars. And, by the way, your seat has a fire-resistant coating. It's necessary to prevent a fire from spreading in case of an accident. Airport workers transport unclaimed luggage to special centers. If the owner doesn't show up within three months, the baggage is put up for sale in specialized stores. 
You couldn't use your phone on an airplane in the past, since cell phones were really dangerous for navigation. Their radio signals could disrupt the settings in aircraft electronics. Oxygen masks fall down not only during strong turbulence, but also when the air pressure inside the cabin changes dramatically. Passengers are okay if they put on their oxygen masks, but in such cases are considered to be an emergency, and pilots do their best to quickly go down to a safe altitude so that passengers can breathe without oxygen masks. Ah, uh, you go to bed early to get more sleep and wake up tomorrow morning refreshed and full of energy. Everything goes well, you fall asleep quickly, and your body wakes you up at 3 a.m. You try to go back to sleep, but you can't. Well, here's something to help you. Do muscle relaxing exercises. Straighten your legs, squeeze them together, then relax. Pull your toes forward, hold for 10 seconds, then return them to their normal position for 10 seconds. Repeat this exercise 3 to 5 times. Don't take the phone. The screen's glow with bluish tinge blocks the production of melatonin in your body. This hormone reminds your body that it's time to sleep and you feel tired. Blue light eliminates the feeling of fatigue, so you can't fall asleep for a long time. Better to open a paper book. Also, try not to use the phone at least one hour before going to bed. A warm and cool shower will help you fall asleep again. Your body often wakes up from overheating. Use cold water to lower the temperature. Your mind will clear and your body will want to sleep. Lavender tea or essential oil improves the quality of sleep without any side effects. You can even buy a lavender plant so its smell always fills your bedroom. Another great way to drift to sleep quickly is to get out of bed and do something relaxing. Leave the bedroom and enter another room. Read a book or listen to some quiet music. Your brain gets a little activity, which will help your mind to relax again. Also, try not to look at the clock. The thought that there's just three hours left before the alarm ringing can make you upset. The 4-7-8 method is a breathing exercise that reduces anxiety and stress. You can do this at any time. Touch your tongue tip to the back of your upper teeth. Exhale through your mouth, letting out a whistling noise. Close your mouth and take a deep breath through your nose for 4 seconds. Hold your breath for 7 seconds. Open your mouth and exhale for 8 seconds. Keep holding the tongue to your upper teeth. Repeat the exercise at least 3 to 5 times. Try not to nap more than 30 minutes during the day and do it well before the evening. Daytime naps can prevent you from falling asleep quickly at night. Use this little siesta correctly and it will help you stay alert throughout the day. But if you get too carried away with sleeping after lunch, it will cause problems with sleeping at night. Five minutes before bedtime, start writing down your thoughts in a diary. It'll help you get rid of a thousand unnecessary thoughts. Write all the positive events you had during the day and how you feel now. This method gets rid of disturbing thoughts and calms your mind. A strange but working technique for falling asleep? Make it a goal to stay awake as long as possible. Think about the fact that you don't want to sleep. Stay awake in your mind. Imagine that you go for a run or work out in the gym. Surprisingly, it can help you fall asleep quickly. When someone tells you not to think about a pink elephant, you immediately think about it. This technique works similarly. Imagining a beautiful picture also helps you fall asleep. This isn't a sheep counting method. You need to imagine something moving. But these movements should be monotonous. For example, you see an elephant bathing in a river or a train passing through a green meadow. Focusing on imaginary sounds helps too. It can be the sound of rain or the crackling of a fire. At first, it'll be difficult for you to focus on the picture. But five minutes later, you'll feel the moving image lead you straight into the dream world. This method will help you fall asleep in 10 seconds. But at first, you need to waste two minutes. And the last 10 seconds of them will be the ones which you fall asleep after. Relax your face, jaws, eyes, lips, and eyebrows. Relax your shoulders to release tension and lower your arms to your sides. Exhale, relaxing your chest. Relax your legs, thighs, and calves. Clear your mind for 10 seconds by imagining a calm picture. Lake or forest, whatever. If this doesn't work, try saying the words don't think over and over again for 10 seconds. 
After this, it'll be easier to fall asleep. It might not work so quickly the first time around, but if you train every day, then in a few weeks, you'll be able to fall into a dream using this method in any position, even sitting. It's not always possible to get quality sleep. Fortunately, there are ways to help you feel good in the morning and get up from the first alarm ring even if you haven't rested enough. Practice getting up from the first ring of the alarm clock. At night, when you go to bed, set the alarm for 2 minutes. Close your eyes, and after 120 seconds, get out of bed and turn off the alarm. Repeat this exercise 2-3 to three times. This is a way to train your mind and body to get up at the first ring. In the morning, when your alarm clock rings, you will remember the exercises you did before and get out of bed much easier than usual. This method is effective since the brain can unconsciously repeat what you did earlier in a similar situation. One of the best alarm clocks is the sunlight. Don't close the curtains before going to bed, so you wake up with the first rays of the sun. Better not to do it in summer, though, when the sun rises too early. It can disrupt your sleep. When you've gotten out of bed, look out the window and take a deep breath of the fresh morning air. Doing something unusual is a great way to quickly wake up your sleepy brain. If you usually pick up your phone while waking up, don't touch it next time. Try dancing while lying in bed or loudly name the last three movies you've watched. Get your brain and body working. If you feel sleepy on the way to work, then change your usual route or ask a stranger what time it is. Getting out of your comfort zone will cheer you up perfectly. There are smart alarm clocks that wake you up during the light sleep stage. When you're in a deep sleep, it's very difficult to get up, even if you've been sleeping for 8 hours. A smart alarm clock records your sleep and wakes you up at the moment when you move in bed, that is, during the light sleep stage. If you need to get up at 7 a.m., the alarm clock will wake you up between 6 and 7, depending on when you start to toss. Put the phone on the other side of the room. To turn off the alarm in the morning, you'll have to get out of bed and walk there. From a standing position, it's much easier to resist the temptation to lie down in bed again. It's important to wake up at the same time every day. No exceptions for weekends or holidays, sorry. Your body needs to get used to a proper sleep schedule. Even if you go to bed late, it's better to wake up at your usual time and then have a nap in the afternoon. Soon your body will start to wake up at the same time by itself, and you will forget about an alarm clock. For hundreds of millennia, we've developed a habit of going to bed after sunset. And of course, this habit is preserved in our body, regardless of what kind of lifestyle we lead. The most useful sleep, according to the biological clock, occurs 90 minutes before midnight. That's why it's so important to go to bed at this time. If you go to bed late and think about how difficult it will be for you to wake up in the morning, then it will certainly happen. Try to fall asleep with positive thoughts. If you go to bed at 3 a.m. and are about to get up at 7, tell yourself that the next 4 hours will help you gain strength and get a great night's sleep. Imagine waking up full of energy and it'll be easier for you to survive the morning. Nighty night! You can turn ordinary matches into waterproof ones. Apply a thin coat of nail polish to the matches and let it dry. Once they're ready, they'll stay dry enough to start a fire even if you drop the matches in the water. If you get lost somewhere during the winter and need a drink, then don't eat snow. It has much more air than water, so you won't even feel much more hydrated. Your body also wastes a lot of energy trying to eat it. Even worse, you might lower your body temperature and could even get sick. If you find yourself face-to-face -face with a coyote or a wolf, don't turn your back. Slowly retreat while facing the animal. This might only work for a single animal, though. If you meet a pack, then the most important thing is to make sure that they don't surround you. Back away towards a tree and press your back against it. Then choose the right moment and climb it as quickly as possible. Several layers of clothing will warm you better than one warm fur coat or down jacket. Air will be trapped between the clothing layers, insulating you and keeping your body warm. If you get lost in the woods, always try to sleep a little above the ground. You can lay on a layer of branches and leaves as a makeshift bed or stretch a hammock out between some trees. At night, the temperature drops and the ground becomes cold. Even if you build a fire, it could go out while you sleep, 
and the ground will be sapping your body heat. You're in a boat in the middle of the sea, no food, no fishing net, and you're hungry. It was supposed to be only a 3-hour tour. Well, guess what? You can catch fish with the help of shoelaces and any object – phone, watch, or keys. The shadow cast by the boat in the sea can attract fish, and a reflective object can work as bait. Tie your keys to your shoelaces and use them as a fishing rod. Even if a fish doesn't bite, activities like this are a good way to maintain a healthy mind on the open sea. A short meditation can save you from a panic attack. You need to focus on your breathing and try to slow it down. Your brain will quickly calm down and turn its focus away from the panic. Oxygen masks in airplanes work on the same principle. When you control your breathing, your attention is redirected away from whatever bad thing is happening. You can make a torch out of a log. Put a small log vertically, make a deep star-shaped cut on the top, put dry grass leaves and sticks inside. Once you're done, set fire to the log and watch it burn for up to 3 hours. This should work the same regardless of the size and type of wood. Now, if you meet an angry grizzly bear, never try to run away because the bear can easily outrun you. Instead, lie down and don't move. Grizzlies only usually attack when they see a threat, so they'll often leave you alone if you show them that you won't cause them any problems. This only works with grizzly bears, though. If a confrontation is unavoidable, back away slowly and use bear spray. If you don't have any, pepper spray will work similarly and should disorient the bear and scare it away. Or not. Don't eat berries or mushrooms in the forest if you don't know exactly what they are. They could be poisonous. If you have no other option, eat the inner bark of maples, birches, and pines to fill your stomach. Use a knife to cut away the rough outer bark and get to the softer white stuff. You can boil it to make it even softer, or cook it over an open fire to make a crunchy snack. And if you're really starving, you can look for ants. They might not be the most appetizing, but they're pretty nutritious. If you don't have a watch, you can use your fingers to find out how much time is left until sunset. Raise your hand so the inside of your palm is facing you. Your fingers should be between the sun and the horizon line. See how many fingers can fit in this space. The thickness of one finger equals about 15 minutes, so you can calculate the time left before sunset. If you're lost and need to build a fire to attract attention, throw in a lot of pine, cedar branches, cones, and any unnecessary rubber objects. Your fire will emit more black smoke, which makes it visible from afar. If you have no water in the desert but have some food, try to avoid eating for as long as you can. The more you eat, the more thirsty you'll get. The body needs liquid to digest food, so it'll use up what little you have. A person can live much longer without food than without water, so don't be afraid to stay hungry. Hey, you found a huge puddle of dirty water in the forest. If you're desperate for a drink, you can fill your bottle and filter it into drinking water. To clean it, make a rope of gauze or clothing. Put one end into the dirty bottle and the other one into the empty one. Before long, the clean water will flow into the empty bottle through the rope while the impurities are left behind. Before hiking, replace your regular shoelaces with paracord shoelaces. If you don't have enough rope, these laces can give you a few extra feet in a pinch. If you're lost in the forest and have nothing to warm you, then take dry leaves and grass from the ground and put it between two layers of clothing. This will help you stay warm for a long time. When you're lost in the desert, try to move as little as possible during the day. Find a shadow or create it from improvised materials and sit in the shade until dark. At night, you'll spend much less energy and use up less fluid while you walk. This will help you to avoid the risk of a heat stroke. If you fall through some ice, don't try to get out like you would in a pool. If you put your hands on the ice and try to push yourself out with your arms, it could crack and make you fall back into the water. You need to stretch your arms parallel to the ice surface and stretch your legs way back so they float in the water. In this horizontal position, start waving your legs as if you're swimming. Move your arms carefully without putting too much weight on the ice, and you should be able to escape. If you need to build a fire while it's too windy, here's what to do. 
dig two holes next to each other and create a small underground tunnel between them. Make a fire in one of the pits. The wind can't extinguish it, and the fire gets its air through the second pit. This method is also useful if you need to build a fire without drawing attention. In the dark, this kind of fire won't be visible. Don't throw away or pop bubble wrap. Take it on a hike with you. It will protect you from the cold better than even a thick blanket would. Those tiny air bubbles are perfect insulation. Just put it in between layers of clothing, and it'll stop any warmth from escaping. The plastic it's made of is also waterproof, so it can stop you from getting wet, too. Swimming in the sea not far from the shore, you can easily get swept up in rip currents. If this happens, the most important thing to remember is not to swim against the current. This will only waste your strength and sap your energy, and you're unlikely to ever overpower an ocean current. Instead, try to swim sideways along the shore. Sooner or later, you should get out of the current, and then you can safely swim to the beach. If you're stuck in a falling elevator, don't try to jump at the moment of collision. Don't take a sitting position or stand either. You need to lie on the floor, facing the ceiling. Spread your legs as wide as possible, cover your face with one hand, and put the other hand behind your head for protection. You reduce the pressure on your body in this position when you fall. Ooh, you're lost! A rescue helicopter flies over the forest, but you don't have a flare and don't have time to build a fire. Use a small mirror or phone screen to reflect the sunlight. Aim the light beam towards the helicopter. Rescuers should notice the glare and fly over to save you. Now, when you need help in public, don't ask a group of people. Instead, approach individuals. Because of something called the bystander's effect, the group of people may not help you. This social psychology theory states that people are less likely to help you when others are around them. They assume someone else from the group will run to your rescue. If you're driving in the city or another area with a grid-like design and think you're being followed, turn right or left four times. You'll end up at the same place you were before, and if the car behind you does too, you're probably being followed. Don't go home and try to lose them. If you're outdoors while a storm is approaching and your hair stands up, find shelter immediately. Static in your hair means positive charges are rising through your body, reaching toward the storm's negative charges. You're likely to be struck by lightning. If a shelter isn't available, squat low on the ground on the balls of your feet, put your hands on your knees and your head between them. Making yourself as small as possible will minimize the contact with the ground and the damage from the lightning. Always carry a small mirror with you while traveling in isolated areas. It'll come in handy if you get lost. If you're stranded in the desert and a plane flies overhead, point the mirror toward it to reflect the light. If you don't have a mirror, signal planes overhead by waving both your arms up and down. If you're stranded somewhere in your car, don't abandon it. It's more challenging for rescuers to spot you without your vehicle. Unlike what's shown on TV, when someone's about to drown, they won't wave or cry out. They'll have their head tilted back, submerged in water. They'll attempt to keep their mouth above the surface by using their arms. When you see someone looking like they're floating or bobbing, trying to get their head out of the water by trying to climb onto the surface of the water, they need help. If you can't swim and you've fallen in deep water, don't panic. Hold your breath and let yourself bob up to the surface. Keep your back and legs straight. Try performing little kicks to bring your body back to the surface. If you're trying to save someone who can't swim, never approach them directly. They'll likely bring you down in their panic. Sneak up on them from behind, slip your arm across their chest, and make sure their hands aren't facing you. If they grab you, they can pull you under. Try to swim below them, come back a bit further away, and try to help them again. If you come across a grizzly bear, it's not your day. Now, don't run and don't make eye contact. Slowly walk away if it isn't close to you. But if it's charging, stand still, you can't outrun it. Speak in a clear, monotone voice and don't scream. 
Now, prior to this, you might want to research to see if there are grizzly bears where you're traveling and take pepper or bear spray with you. If a bear is within 25 feet of you, then use the spray. If it attacks you, curl up in a ball and lie on the ground. Stay quiet, don't move or panic till it goes away. Now, if a polar bear is chasing, but it's far away, start dropping clothing items, a hat, scarf, or a shirt, and run away. Polar bears have short attention spans, and they may stop to sniff your clothing. This will give you time to head to safety. By the way, if both of these bear encounters happen to you, then please remind me not to go on vacation with you. Moving on. If someone is choking, but they're coughing, don't intervene. Coughing means air can get both in and out, and they've got a partial obstruction in their airway. By helping, you could cause a backflow of air, which could either force out the hazard or dislodge the blockage and cause a full block. Just let them cough it out. Only help when they can't breathe or cough. When caught in a strong rip current, never swim against it. You'll tire yourself and it won't end well. Swim parallel to the shore fast, but stay calm and comfortable. Even if you get further out, you'll eventually escape the current and can head back to shore. Thumbs are the weakest part of someone's grip. If someone pulls you by the wrist, don't twist your arms in their hand. Try to push away, starting right where their thumbs are. Notify your state department if you're going abroad. In the U.S. and some other Western countries, you can tell the Department of State that you're going overseas. In the event of a natural disaster or a political conflict, they'll know that you need to be evacuated. They'll also update you on things that happen in the country you're visiting to protect you from trouble. If you find yourself in a stampede of people, you're in trouble as soon as you fall. Don't curl up in a ball and wait for it to be over. This can cause more damage. Try to grab someone's leg as they run past you to help yourself up and keep going. Sometimes, camping trips end with people lost. If you're in such a situation and trying to walk out of the camping site, take burned coal or wood sticks with you. Use them to draw messages on trees, rocks, or logs. The markings will stay there for weeks, and it'll be easier for the rescue party to trace you. Always carry a needle in your first aid kit. If you're lost, you can make a compass with one. You first need to magnetize the needle by rubbing the eye against hair, fur, or silk around 100 times. Fill a container with water, place a leaf on the water surface, and rest your needle on the leaf. It should start pointing north to south. When calling emergency services, first tell them your exact location and then the problem. Even if you get cut off, they'll know where to send the police or an ambulance. If you have a fishy smell in your home, call a licensed electrician immediately. It can come from overheated plastic and electrical components that can cause an electrical fire. It might be from an outlet, a switch, an electrical breaker, or something else. Like the fish you're baking in the oven. If a snake bites you, there are a few ways to tell if it was venomous. You can ask. It probably won't tell you. Venomous snakes usually have multiple colors and cat-like pupils. Look at the bite area. If there are two deep puncture wounds, you were most likely attacked by a venomous snake. If the bite mark has tiny sharp teeth and a U-shape, it was probably non-venomous. Whatever the case, call emergency services and snap a picture of the snake if you can. Using your mouth to pull the venom out is even more dangerous. You've got more chances of getting poison than removing the toxin from your body. If you're traveling and exposed to freezing temperatures, you're at risk for frostbite. At first, a part of your body will become hard and pale. Then you'll experience aching, stinging, and numbness. To avoid frostbite, apply petroleum jelly on your nose, ears, and the tips of your fingers and toes. You uh, did remember to bring some, didn't you? This brings up a reminder. If you're shivering while in the cold, you're safe. Your body is trying to warm you up by contracting your muscles. But once you stop shivering, and if you grow tired and want to sleep, then find a warm place immediately. You're at risk for hypothermia. You'll need a warm compress on your chest, neck, or lower tummy. Never apply a warm compress to your hands or legs. The sudden temperature change could force cold blood back into your heart, lungs, or brain, causing your core body temperature to drop. 
If you're lost and you need to drink water from a stagnant source, always boil it to purify it. Untreated water has bacteria or other oils and chemicals that can be harmful to you. The exact temperature and time you need to boil the water depend on the altitude. To be on the safe side, try to boil the water for 3 minutes. When cooking oils start to boil, they'll smoke and then catch fire. If that happens, turn off the heat and don't remove the cooking pot. Cover it with a metal lid. Fire won't survive without an oxygen source. Use baking soda to extinguish small grease fires. You'll need a ton of it to do the job. And only use this tip when the fire is small. Never use water. It'll cause the oil to splash and spread the fire. You got all that? Good. You walk in the park and stop because you come across the cutest puppy. While admiring it, you notice a red collar. And remember, red is the universal sign for stop. All over the world, you see it on stop signs and stoplights. This cute pup is one you shouldn't get too close to. A red collar on a dog signals that the animal is aggressive and should be given space by humans and other animals. These dogs may be more likely to snap, bite, or lunge at any passersby. You may find this hard to believe given how happy the dog might look when you see it with its handler. You're right, it probably is delighted because it loves its owner and may also be super protective of them. It's also possible that the dog may be an assistance dog. However, these dogs should wear a vest with emotional support or assistance dog written on them. Oh, and please remember three important words. Do not pet. Not all dog owners opt to use color-coded language with their pets. It's often used more in professional environments. For example, if a dog and their sniffer are required for scent work, they probably have better things to do than getting belly rubs from strangers. The red color might now serve as your fair warning. It's a fact that dogs have up to 300 million olfactory receptors in their noses. Humans have roughly 6 million. It means that their sense of smell is about 50 times better than ours. The part of a dog's brain devoted to analyzing smells is about 40 times greater than ours. Dogs are attracted to new odors. There's a good chance they'd prefer a sniffing session to your offer of a belly rub. It could just annoy them. Why don't we take a look at some other things that can irritate your dog? This first one might hurt your feelings and be hard to accept. Have you ever noticed your dog freezing in terror when you go to hug it? Have you ever wondered why? Dogs just don't like it when you hug them. Research has shown you should never constrain your dog, which is exactly what happens when you hug them. If your dog comes looking for it, then okay. But otherwise, a pat on the head will be enough. None of us like returning home to find our beautiful furniture chewed to pieces or discovering that our brand new shoes are ruined. But one thing you shouldn't do is yell at your dog, even if they chewed your favorite and most expensive shoes. Yelling just confuses the dog. Dogs may simply think you're barking at them and start wondering what's happened to its human. I know those puppy eyes are beautiful and hard to look away from, but try not to stare at them for too long. Prolonged eye contact can be another form of aggression to our loyal companions. This even applies to your own dog, who may get spooked by your serious demeanor. This is especially true with strange dogs who may be anxious or uneasy with your presence. Try to distract yourself from looking at them by simply focusing on stroking that warm, cuddly fur. What else annoys your dog? Whilst your furry friend may be perfectly okay with having extremely oversized nails, one thing they're often not okay with is their owners trying to clip them. Research suggests that dogs hate getting their nails clipped, ears checked, and mouth examined. However, these things have to happen as overgrown nails could hurt your dog, and checking their ears could prevent nasty ear infections. It's good to get your dog comfortable with you touching their feet and ears before taking them to your local groomer or trying to cut nails yourself. Being a responsible dog owner is by making sure that they get enough exercise. And dogs always love a walk, right? Well, not always. Let's be practical about this. You're at the beach on a sunny day. You walk on the sand barefoot and suddenly you feel your feet burning. You quickly struggle back to your towel. See where I'm going with this? If it's too hot for your feet, it's probably too hot for your dog's paws. And it's not just burning feet you need to be worried about. The heat itself can harm your dog. Dogs can cool themselves by panting. However, this method is not too effective in hot weather. 
By moving your dog walking sessions to early mornings or late afternoons, you could be doing that puppy of yours a big favor. Variety is the spice of life, and don't think this doesn't apply to dogs, especially when it comes to the games you play with them. When we think of games to play with our dogs, the best most of us can come up with is fetch. We're not the ones that have to desperately chase after the ball, so this is quite convenient. Be more creative. Try some other games, one of which is tug of war, which involves equal effort from both dog and human. Dogs love this game, and contrary to popular belief, it has no connection to aggression. Especially if you alternate between who wins each round. This game will also teach your dog a vital skill in impulse control. Games that end early will teach your dog the difference between what's acceptable and what isn't. You can also play training games with your dog. Giving your dog a treat when they look at you without being asked to will enable you to have more control over them. Although they're animals, dogs do have some traits in common with humans. Example: They won't get along with everybody, so don't try to force a dog into a friendship with another dog. Some dogs are shy, whilst others are social butterflies. Our job as responsible pet owners is to find out how we can make our dogs comfortable. Dogs have different levels of confidence. One dog may be fine with another dog, but become uncomfortable in a group bigger than two. It's sometimes best to create a small group of dog friends for your dog to play with, or just introduce them to new dogs one at a time. But forcing them into uncomfortable situations is a no-go. One thing we're all at sometimes reluctant towards is change. One thing that a dog loves to do is to make their owner happy. So if your dog's not listening to you, there's a good chance it's because your rules aren't consistent enough. Consistency is something that dogs love. It allows them to know how to behave in different situations. Telling them to lay down after previously using the word "sit" can cause major confusion. As a matter of fact, you should probably make a daily schedule for your dog. This will prevent your dog expecting a game of tug of war when you're trying to get ready for work. And one thing you need to put into the schedule is some time outside of the house. This will teach your dog how to behave in new environments. You can't just expect your dog to enter one of the many dog-friendly cafes that now exist and know how to be a good girl or boy. Take baby steps. If your dog becomes excited, you're moving too fast. Oh, and don't forget those yummy treats to reward your pooch for good behavior. With all of the attention our dogs pay to ourselves, it's only fair that we should try to do the very same with them. Not paying attention to your dog's body language isn't good. Just because they don't speak a language doesn't mean you can't tell what's going on inside their head. Research shows that dogs speak with their bodies. Although some behavior, like leaning in for more attention, are pretty universal, dogs have very different ways of showing their anxiety, from freezing in place to an odd tail wag. A dog's eyes, tail, and ears and posture are key to understanding how your pet is feeling. Paying close attention to how your dog responds to different social settings will also allow you to prevent any uncomfortable situations moving forward. The most obvious thing your dog doesn't like: being ignored. Neither dogs nor humans have the energy to play all day, but time does need to be carved out of your schedule for some one-on-one -on -one bonding. Food and shelter isn't the only thing these creatures need. This is especially true when adding a new dog to your home. Dogs may also feel left out. Please make sure the older dog doesn't feel unloved. Let's head to the Middle East. There's a large desert here, and it's completely dark, except for one spot. It's a big circle that glows with a bright orange light, the Darvaza crater, and it's just a giant gas burner. Years ago, geologists found gas here, and they started mining for it. But when they excavated, they came across a void underground. The void collapsed, and it formed a crater. It's as wide as half a soccer field, and as deep as a five-story building. Gas began to come out of the cracks in the crater, and since animals were often grazing near this place, the geologists decided to set these gas streams on fire to exhaust the source. Geologists thought the fire would be over in a day or two, but if you come here now. You'll see this gateway to the underworld is still burning, and it's been going on for almost 50 years. In 2013, a man descended to the bottom of the burning crater for the first time. 
he collected many different samples there, and scientists were able to find bacteria that aren't found anywhere else on Earth. They're quite comfortable at the bottom of this endless burning frying pan. In 2009, a man in L'Aquila, Italy, saw flickering lights dancing above the stone street. He immediately knew what to do and moved his family to a safer place. Only seconds later, a massive 8.3 magnitude earthquake hit the whole region. His knowledge of the strange lights saved his and his family's lives. So what are those mysterious warnings? For centuries, people interpreted the lights as something otherworldly. The scientific community didn't take them seriously, just put them down to a false recollection, a mind trick, or pure imagination. With the introduction of surveillance cameras and smartphones, the amount of evidence grew enormously. Now the connection was obvious. Lights appear and an earthquake hits. So experts finally started taking it seriously and started digging for the truth. But after years of research, to this day, geologists are still not fully sure what the source of the lights is, but they have recognized five types of them. Bright flashes that light up the sky, looking like storm lightning or a strong camera flash. Rays in the sky that can look like light columns. Different sized flames that come through the ground. Diffused glows over the mountains. And slow moving balls of light that can be misinterpreted as ball lightning. Another equally little understood atmospheric phenomenon, these are literal balls of lightning that can float and explode, leaving a sulfuric odor behind. But unlike ball lightning, these spherical EQLs seem to be harmless, if you don't count what's coming afterward. But with all these types of lights, experts can't know how exactly they're connected to earthquakes. They don't only show up before one hits. Some have been reported during and after earthquakes, they can also appear with other phenomena, like meteorite crashes, volcanic eruptions, or auroras. For now, scientists can only come up with theories to explain the unexplainable. One of the recent ones claimed the lights were electric lines being broken during an earthquake. But this theory doesn't explain how the phenomenon was observed hundreds or even thousands of years ago. Like the ancient Chinese tale of dragon-looking clouds appearing in the sky as a warning of an upcoming quake. Or how an ancient Roman historian reported huge flame-like lights bursting out just before a huge earthquake occurred. The electric line theory was quickly dismissed. Another theory suggested it was escaping gas. During an earthquake, the underground rocks expand and shrink under pressure and heat. This opens and closes small spaces between them. Different gases make their way through these new openings. Radon, for example, can get released during seismic activity. It can ionize the air, making it electrically charged. But radon doesn't do it enough to create bright sparks of light. This theory is close, but doesn't quite hit the mark. One of the most accepted theories is that it might be from electricity traveling up from underground. When underground igneous rocks, ones that form from magma deep within the Earth, are under stress, they release ionized, or electrically charged, oxygen. It travels through the surface and up into the atmosphere, where it creates a localized electric field. That can produce brief flashes of visible light. Some aren't even that quick and can go on for minutes at a time. So there you are. You've been driving for hours through the night. You didn't have any chance to sleep, so your mind is hanging by a thread you stop the car and go out to stretch your limbs. And then you look up into the sky and see a beautiful sunrise. Whoa, wait, there are three suns in the sky. You rub your eyes, but nope, there are still three bright stars in the sky. No, our home star hasn't been torn into three pieces, nor has it been visited by two other stars. This is called a sun dog. It occurs mostly during severe frosts, small ice crystals in the sky bend the light. As a result, you may see three bright spots in the sky instead of just one. This phenomenon is officially called a halo. Usually, it's just a circle around the sun. You can even see a halo at night, too. Just look at a street lamp, and you'll see a bright circle around it. 
Sometimes, a halo can take on a fancier shape. If there's a lot of ice in the air, the light is warped even more. Just like in a room with a dozen mirrors. Then, the halo can take on the shape of a human eye. Because of this phenomenon, a false dawn can occur too. While you're looking at the horizon, the dawn begins and the edge of the sun appears. A little bit more and... Wait, the sun starts to just dissolve in the sky. After a few moments, it's dark again. And only a minute later, the real sun shows its face. It was the same light curvature effect you saw before with the three suns. Only now, the light is curved vertically, not horizontally. And instead of the real sun, its reflection in ice crystals in the sky appeared. And now moving on. This cloud looks like a dinosaur. And this one looks like a cat. And this, whoa, it looks like these clouds are falling down. Oh, phew, that's just a mammatus cloud. Their shape really makes them look like chunks of cloud about to slam on the ground. Well, that's not going to happen, but you better start seeking cover anyway. Such clouds are a sign of a severe thunderstorm coming. It takes a lot of moist air with ice crystals at the top and dry air at the bottom to create such clouds. Then, vertical currents of air appear between these layers. And these currents make the clouds take the shape of a human brain. <laughs> and this giant cloud looks like a dome that's going to cover an entire city. In fact, that's exactly what happens. A huge cloud covers a large area and then rains heavily on it. Sometimes, the front of such a cloud takes a bizarre shape, like in these pictures. It looks more like several giant spaghetti clouds, or even giant cloud worms. This phenomenon can often be seen in Australia, and it's called morning glory. It happens because a strong wind twists part of the cloud on both sides, and then the huge sheet of air dough splits into thick strips. And sometimes, you can see clouds in the sky made of birds. Wow, that cloud moves quickly and changes shape. It becomes more transparent, but then denser and darker again. The birds seem to be involved in some kind of dance or performance. But they're not doing it for beauty or for the crowds of spectators gathered below. They're doing it for protection. When birds group themselves into such a cloud, they intimidate birds of prey. An eagle or hawk would have a hard time picking out a single target among the endless number of birds. And they move quickly, covering each other. Fish are huddled together in schools in the same way. Such a cloud might just spook a hungry predator. Grab some sunglasses and you're good to go. This phenomenon lasts around 40 minutes. These clouds are the same ones that can cause a spooky ring around the moon at night sometimes. Nature sends early signs of disasters in many different ways. J-shaped trees might mean there's a landslide coming. Since the ground is moving slowly, the trees grow into this super selfieable shape. Try to find a flat area and avoid going near any trees unless you have superhuman strength. Another mystical phenomenon can be seen in the desert, a sand waterfall. When the wind brings a lot of sand to the edge of the canyon, it begins to fall down. Now amplify this effect 100 times and you get a sand waterfall in Saudi Arabia. It's really like Niagara Falls, only there's not a drop of water. The locals say this phenomenon warns of an impending sandstorm. There are many ways you can save your life in extreme situations. For example, when you get lost in the wilderness. But there are just as many myths. Let's have a look at some of them. Rumor has it that if you find yourself surrounded by snow and with no drinking water at hand, eating snow is the best way to rehydrate. Unfortunately, it's just false. Even worse, eating snow can lead to further dehydration. How come? Once you stuff some snow into your mouth, your body has to start a process that will melt the snow and warm it. And you'll need to spend more energy, which will make you lose liquids faster. But it's not all. Eating snow can result in hypothermia, which is twice as dangerous if you're alone in the wilderness. Besides, chances are that snow contains harmful bacteria that will make you sick. 
So if you don't have any other solution, melt the snow you're going to consume in your hands first to stay away from the snow that doesn't look fresh and white. If you find yourself with frostbite, take care of it as soon as you can. But despite a popular misconception, do not pour hot water on the damaged skin. It can make things much worse. Instead, if you can't see a doctor immediately, remove wet clothing and place the spot with frostbite in warm water. After that, make sure that the damaged body part isn't going to freeze again and keep it elevated to reduce swelling. Then, put a bandage on the hurt area. If it's your fingers or toes, apply a bandage on each of them separately and then place cotton balls in between so that they don't touch. Never, ever rub the damaged area. If you get lost in the wilderness and have no idea what direction to choose, find a stream or a small creek. Follow it until it merges with a larger river and it will take you to a more developed and inhabited area where you'll get help. But don't you ever fall for this myth. You can drink the water if you see animals drinking it. If you manage to find a source of water, you need to purify this water first. Your body is very different from those of animals. And if you don't purify the water before drinking it, you can get extremely sick. Even in seemingly clean water, there are millions of microorganisms, and some of them are very dangerous to people. Freshwater springs might be safe to drink from, but in a survival situation, err on the side of caution. There is a survival myth that it's safe to drink water in small amounts, but such a delusion can have very dramatic consequences. Drinking any amount of salt water leads to dehydration much faster than if you don't drink anything at all. The best thing you can do with salt water is to use it for cooling down your body, not drinking. So, let's say you're wandering in the wilderness, lost and desperate, when suddenly you see a cave. Great, it'll make a perfect shelter. There's some wood and tinder you can pick up nearby, and you have matches. It seems all odds are in your favor. And they indeed are if you don't make a fatal mistake, which is building a fire inside the cave. And the main problem isn't the smoke from the fire. The thing is that the heat coming from your fire will cause the rocks, which make up the walls and the ceiling of the cave, to expand. Eventually, they might break, and then you'll get trapped in a rockfall or a landslide. To stay warm and safe at the same time, build a fire right outside the cave. As soon as you realize that you've gotten lost in the woods during a hike, immediately stop. It does sound counterintuitive, I admit, but it's a better solution than to keep walking. Better stay where you are and try to make some kind of shelter. For one thing, when you move, you get dehydrated faster. Besides, the further you travel away from wherever you got lost, the longer it will take a rescue party to find you. There's a myth that if you come across a swarm of bees and disturb these insects, the best course of action is to jump into the water. Unfortunately, it won't do you any good. The bees will just wait until you resurface to breathe. A good solution is to run in a straight line as fast as possible until the bees stop chasing you. An even better alternative is to find shelter, your car, a house, or even a public bathroom, and hide inside. Now, what would you do if you unexpectedly encountered a snake? Would you move towards the reptile and try to shoo it away? Or would you maybe poke it with a stick? Or you could shout at it and stomp your feet. What's your choice? Approaching the reptile and trying to scare it away to save yourself is nothing but a myth. The snake may think you're being aggressive and attack you. But even though snakes don't have ears, they're sensitive to vibrations. That's why raising your voice, banging two sticks together, or stomping your feet can make a snake retreat. But if there's an opportunity to walk away, use it. Here are some other tips that may help you in a critical situation. If you're falling from a cliff, do your best to break your fall into several parts. The shorter they are, the better. Each of the segments will absorb some impact of the fall, and you'll have much higher chances of surviving. Try to grab onto a sturdy object like a bush or a rock on your way to the bottom to slow down your fall. If you've fallen through the ice into freezing water, try to get back to the edge of the ice. Don't pull yourself out by grabbing it. The edge will keep breaking. 
and you'll exhaust yourself in no time. Kick your legs until your body is positioned horizontally in the water. After that, get out of the water and onto the ice like a seal. Once you've made it there, don't stand up. Remain spread out. This way, your weight will be distributed over a larger area. Then the ice will be less likely to break. If you're at sea and spot a whirlpool coming towards you, don't panic. If you understand which way it's spinning, ride its side and use the whirlpool's current to catapult you out of danger. If you start fighting it, you're likely to get pulled inside. There's also a chance a whirlpool will dissolve or become weaker closer to the bottom. So if you do get trapped by it, take a deep breath and wait for an opportunity to swim up and away. If you get trapped under some debris, for example, during an earthquake, your main task is to protect your respiratory system. Plus, you have to make your air supply last as long as possible. Take your shirt off and tie its bottom in a knot. Then put it back on your head through the neck hole. The knot should be positioned over the top of your head. This way, you'll get a makeshift hood that will protect your face from dust, sand, and debris. It'll also provide you with a bit of oxygen while you're trying to get back to the surface. If you've gotten stuck in quicksand, do all you can to keep your head and arms above the surface at all times. Start to carefully wiggle your legs. Quicksand will fill the space your limbs occupied. As soon as you can, stretch out on your back. It will increase your surface area. Keep making tiny movements until your legs are free. You can also use backstroke motions with your arms. It'll help you pull your legs out. If there's nothing to use as tinder to start a fire, unpack your junk food stash. Pringles, Cheetos, and Lay's can serve as effective substitute for dry leaves. The same goes for spaghetti noodles. Something interesting has recently happened in South Dakota. It was all over the internet, so perhaps you already know about it. In July of 2022, the sky in this state suddenly turned green. So what happened there? Was it caused by a human or by nature? Let's find out. Tuesday, July 5th, 2022. Shortly after a heavy storm, the sky over South Dakota in the U.S. was still overcast. Locals finally went outside and saw that the sky had an intense dark green hue, and they'd never seen anything like that before. People said that it looked like something straight up from science fiction, or even a horror movie. Unsurprisingly, South Dakotans immediately started spreading the news all over social media. People shared their beautiful, yet very eerie pictures on Twitter. They showed the sky over the city of Sioux Falls and a few other towns. Even though it may look like something supernatural, in reality, this is not a terrifying phenomenon at all. It's a simple play of the light and the atmosphere. Something like this happens quite rarely and usually means that really bad weather is approaching. And that's also true to what happened in South Dakota. Just before people started sharing photos, a thunderstorm swept through the town of Sioux Falls. This was confirmed by the U.S. Weather Service. This hurricane was terrible. The wind speed was about 100 miles per hour. According to the Buford Scale on wind speeds, this is the fastest and most destructive storm. There are only 12 numbers on this scale, and the maximum wind strength starts at 73 miles per hour. But why isn't this all over the news then? Well, because it's kind of a usual thing for the residents. Thunderstorms occur very often in the United States, especially in the warmer months. And one out of 10 such thunderstorms can become something serious, like a tornado. This one wasn't an exception. It was the so-called Derreco storm. Derreco is very widespread and long-lived. It's actually a combination of a fast-moving group of severe thunderstorms and downpours. People often say that a derecho is as strong as a tornado. Still, there's a difference between them. A tornado is a vortex, a rotating column of air. It's usually about 500 feet in diameter, although sometimes its width can reach up to 2.5 miles. I don't envy those who would stumble upon that. But the main point is, 
that they rotate. The wind moves very fast in a circle, near some invisible center. A derecho is a strong thunderstorm, or a system of strong thunderstorms with straight line winds. In other words, it doesn't spin. Instead, the derecho chooses a point somewhere and simply runs to it, like a very motivated marathon runner. If we compare a derecho to an ordinary tornado, the latter has six levels of strength, from 40 to 380 miles per hour. So a derecho is kind of like a small, average level one to two tornado. Usually its speed is within the range of 73 to 113 miles per hour. And in both cases, they can be accompanied by severe thunderstorms, lightning, and rain. But still, these are different things. A storm becomes a derecho if the damage trail left by it exceeds 240 miles and if the wind speed is at least 58 miles per hour. It's quite difficult to predict. It can form even on a clear day when meteorologists don't even anticipate any storms. And then the winds appear suddenly. It's so surprising that they may even feel explosive. But the National Weather Service tries to warn people at least half an hour or an hour before this happens, so that residents have time to prepare and hide. It wasn't any different this time. The storm swept through almost all of South Dakota, as well as the states of Minnesota and Iowa. The consequences were quite serious. More than 30,000 people were left without electricity. Fortunately, people were fine. That's because the locals are pretty used to derecos. However, the green sky is something different. It became a very unusual sight for the locals. Everyone was wondering why it happened. Was it a bad sign or a normal weather phenomenon? Well, to be honest, scientists don't have an exact explanation. But although there are only assumptions, they sound pretty convincing. A green sky is a very rare phenomenon. Most scientists think that this happens when a powerful storm approaches the area before sunset or sunrise. Then the sky will turn green in this area. NBC meteorologist Bill Cairns, who once faced a similar event himself, suggests that the green sky appeared because of the huge hail before the storm. First, let's talk about why the sky looks blue or any other shade, depending on its mood. In short, the sun simultaneously carries all the rays of the color spectrum. It may seem white to us in total, but it actually has all the colors at the same time. However, these color waves all have different lengths. For example, blue rays are shorter than the other ones. They jump away from the air molecules better than the red waves, so they reach us faster. Because of this, on a regular clear day, the sky seems blue. At the same time, red and orange color waves are very long and move slower, so they're usually left behind. But when the sun goes below the horizon or rises, the rays' directions change, and these waves reach us better. It all means that even if the sunrises and sunsets seem red and orange to us, in fact, there are still blue and green waves among them, but they have to bounce off something to reach us faster and become stronger than the red rays. Have you guessed what I'm getting at? This is where the water comes into play. Clouds are made up of water droplets. When they become large enough, but don't fall yet, for example, due to strong winds, they affect how the light behaves in the sky. Large, heavy storms mostly consist of water and hail, and water reflects blue and green rays best of all. That's exactly the reason why the water in rivers and lakes seems bluish-green to us, although in reality, it's transparent. And yeah, algae matter too. So there are a couple of key factors why the sky may turn green. First off, the sun should be at the horizon level. Another factor is that while the storm clouds are approaching, they shouldn't cover the sky completely. There still must be a little room for the sun rays. Then, 
barely noticeable blue rays jump up to storm clouds. They're repelled by water droplets and hail. Mixing with the red sunset, they turn into a bright green light. And this green light is spreading all over the sky. That's why in most of these cases, when the sky turns green, people can only see it in the evenings. Yeah, it can also happen in the middle of the day. But since the conditions are already quite specific, seeing something like that during the day is even rarer. Still, if you see a green sky, you don't need to panic. It doesn't necessarily mean that a terrible storm is approaching. The chances are high though, but still, it's not a rule. It can be just heavy rain or a heavy hail. In other words, if you see a green sky, then you'd better hide and hide your car. However, if you were lucky enough to see the stunning sky from the comfort of your own home, it's indeed very exciting. If you get a glimpse of something like that, just know that you had a chance to experience something very rare and special. Some people said it was the most incredible thing they had ever seen. Bumper stickers on your car give away way more information than you think. That custom sticker you made with your dog might show robbers that you're pretty outdoorsy and like to spend a lot of time away from your house or your car, leaving them exposed. Or that you have enough funds to buy a really expensive dog breed. The fact that you have a sticker saying that you have a kid on board could translate to, I'm easily distracted and always have my hands full. It's really easy to steal my car. Those stickers that you bring from vacation and place on your car also show that you might be away for a couple of months at a time or that you like to travel long distances. If you're proud of your family's activities, don't use bumper stickers to show it. It might lure unwanted people and give them unnecessary information, like the name of the college you go to or where you like to play golf. It's the same if you're part of a certain profession. Thieves can easily assume how many valuables they can find in your car by the amount of money they presume you make. Parking decals can even show where you work or live, which is something you should never share with strangers. The more your car is personalized, the more you'll be remembered. It's not always a bad thing, but if you ever offend someone in traffic, they'll be more inclined to report you to authorities if you have a custom license plate, a quirky color on your car, or a lot of stickers. If you don't intend to keep your car forever, you should consider what it would be like before selling it. A lot of bumper stickers on a car can steer buyers away. Not to mention, it's a real hassle to remove those decals, since they leave a lot of sticky residues behind. They can also damage the car's paint layer. However, one sticker that can keep thieves away is one suggesting that you have an alarm or tracking system set up in your car. You should never keep electronics in your car for longer periods of time. Firstly, they can attract unwanted attention from people looking for easy money. Not to mention leaving your phone or charger at extreme temperatures can damage them permanently. The fact that you use sunscreen every day is really praiseworthy. Just remember not to leave the bottle in the car. Leaving sunscreen exposed to the sun can reduce its effects since overheating causes the chemicals to deactivate. Specialists recommend that sunscreen be stored at temperatures below 77 degrees Fahrenheit. You should even keep those driving glasses of yours away from direct sunlight. Make sure you place them in your glove box or take them with you when exiting the vehicle. Exposure to direct sunlight can damage the lenses and the plastic or metal frame, damaging their fit and efficiency against sun rays. If you've ever bought hairspray, spray paint, or deodorant, you've probably noticed that all these cans have storage temperature recommendations printed on them. That's why you should never leave them exposed to extreme temperatures in your car. These bottles can rapidly expand and explode, not to mention their contents can be highly flammable. Try not to leave a plastic water bottle in your car either. If it's been sitting in the heat, you could end up consuming harmful substances like BPA, a chemical compound used in manufacturing various types of plastics. They can transfer from the plastic into the water after some time. That's why even bottled water has an expiration date on it. It's not like water can expire, it's written there so you know the date up until the water is safe to consume, safe from the chemicals in the plastic. More so, a water bottle left on the seat of a car in direct sunlight can act as a magnifying glass for the sun's rays and become flammable. If you want to make sure your groceries are safe to consume, never leave them out at an unsafe temperature. Whenever you have to buy perishable groceries, 
Leave them in temperatures above 40 degrees Fahrenheit for no longer than two hours, or just one hour before the temperature is above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Best if you can buy meats or dairy last from your grocery list. That way, you get home faster and rapidly store them in your fridge. Even in the cold season, you should never leave beverages unattended in your car. Water, juice, or soda can expand in their containers if frozen and cause a huge mess. I know it's way more comfortable to throw your damp clothes in a bag after leaving the sauna or the swimming pool. Just make sure not to leave them for way too long in your car. Those clothes can easily gather mold or bacteria that can get stuck inside tiny places in your car. Not to mention, you won't be able to wear them ever again. Hang them up to dry as soon as you get home to avoid damaging them. Hey, having fresh breath is something that I always worry about too, especially when I'm on the road. But I always skip the usual pack of gum, since it can become gooey and stick to the things in my car, especially when left in the scorching heat. It's not so good in the winter either, since it can become frozen solid, making it flavorless and dangerous to your pearly whites. Best to opt for gumdrops if you really need to keep something minty in your car. Your handbag is one of those things you should never leave unattended in your car either. We often store valuables in our bags, like the keys to our houses or our wallets, so it's best to make sure that you never leave them in your car to potentially attract thieves. If you need to leave it there, place it in the trunk. It's less visible for most cars. Your car shouldn't be a safe place for your important documents. Either shred or mail them as soon as you can. If your car were to be broken into, your contracts or tax forms might expose vulnerable information about your life. Most people leave documents facing up on their passenger seat, which makes them even more readable for curious people. Wax crayons are useful during long trips to keep youngsters entertained, but it's safer to remove them from the car or place them in an airtight box as soon as you arrive at the destination. These art supplies melt easily and can stain your car seats. Always plan your trip in advance if you intend to buy houseplants. If you know you won't be heading home straight after, make sure you purchase sturdy plants. Even mild temperatures of 45 degrees Fahrenheit to 50 degrees Fahrenheit can wilt away delicate plants within the hour. More so, if its leaves touch the windows, the cold glass might ruin the foliage. Even if it's a bigger plant, don't transport it in the trunk or let them stick out the window. And if it's really cold outside, make sure you warm up your vehicle before placing the plants in. Always make sure to drive with your shoes on, no matter how short the distance is or how hot it is outside. You might have to brake rapidly and find yourself unable to apply enough force with a bare foot. More so, if there's an emergency and you need to step out of the car, you might hurt your feet or waste time putting your shoes back on. If you like to travel with your bike or your scooter attached to your vehicle, you need to take special care of those pneumatic tires, those that are air-filled and need a pump to inflate. They're also on the list of things not to leave in the car on a sunny day. That's because the extreme heat can cause the air inside the tires to expand, at times even resulting in a blowout. Those high temperatures can also weaken the rubber, making you more exposed to a flat tire. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. You got used to browsing the web, playing games, and connecting with your friends on social media all at the convenience of the iPhone in your pocket. But what if I were to tell you that there were many more hidden uses inside it? Back tap. Have you ever noticed that fancy Apple logo on the back of your iPhone? If you've got a cover on, go ahead and pull it off so you can check it out. Okay, you're now probably thinking, there's nothing secret about this, the obvious brand logo on my iPhone. Sure, it might not seem so special, but did you know that it's more than just a handsome decoration? It's also, as a matter of fact, a button. Don't believe me? Give it a try. But before you go tapping at it like you're using your phone backward, you'll need to adjust your settings. There's a reason this handy feature is considered a secret. First, pull up your settings. Tap on Accessibility and then the Touch menu and navigate your way to the very bottom of the list where you'll find the back tap button. Found it? Great! You can choose the double tap or triple tap option, whichever you prefer. And best of all, 
you'll have a multitude of options to choose from. You can have your back tap feature take a photo with your camera app, alert Siri, switch apps, and even take a screenshot. It'll make things a lot easier than performing finger gymnastics when you need to take a screenshot. Adjust Siri's pronunciations. Have you ever asked Siri to call a friend? Maybe you've said, Siri, uh -huh. call Hermione, only for Siri to comply with calling Hermione. Okay, you may not have Harry Potter's best friend in your contacts list, but we can all agree it's not the easiest name to pronounce. Siri might be one of the most intelligent digital assistants in the smartphone game, and sometimes a bit of a smarty pants. But iPhone's companion can often struggle to pronounce even the most common names. If this bothers you, then you'd be delighted to hear you can actually correct Siri's pronunciations. The simplest way is to catch Siri in the act and say, that's not how you pronounce. It will prompt Siri to ask for the correct pronunciation for each name, first, middle, and last, or the name of a place if it's not for a person. Once you've given it, Siri will generate some options, and all you have to do is pick the correct one. If your digital best friend is still struggling, it might help to spell it out. Open your contacts, select the person Siri is struggling to pronounce, and choose Edit. You can add the correct pronunciation in the notes section using phonetic spelling and click pronunciation spelling to train Siri to get it right. Even a super smart digital assistant needs some help sometimes. Hey Siri, it's Leviosa, not Leviosar. Measure app. Is a toolkit too clunky to carry around? Or maybe you've forgotten which drawer you placed the measuring tape in. That's okay iPhone has got some more secrets that will help you out. Did you know that iPhone has a few tools in its arsenal that will serve your carpentry needs? Take the Measure app, for instance. You no longer need that long, awkward-to-use floppy tape to get a measurement on your coffee table, bookshelf, or couch. The app uses augmented reality to measure objects around you using your phone's camera. The first thing you'll need to do is move your phone around so the app can analyze the area you intend to measure. You'll eventually find a white circle with a dot in the middle of your screen. From there, it's not so different from an actual measuring tape. Just line up the dot with the corner of the object you want to measure and trace it to where you want the measurement to end. If you're a builder, you might want to stick to the physical tape for more accurate measurement. This option isn't necessarily for the professionals but the app is excellent for getting a rough estimate. The Measure app can also be used as a level. Simply switch over to the Level tab in your app and place your phone on the surface where you want to get a reading. When you get a green screen and a zero reading, your surface is nice and level. It's not so different from the Compass app's Level feature, so you might have had some bad experiences with this feature before. With your new digital toolbox, your iPhone will make you the handiest person in the house. Create Custom Vibration We all live pretty fast-paced and busy lives these days, and whether we're at work, in a movie, or at school, more often than not, we have our iPhone set to vibrate. Sure, there are some cool ringtones to choose from, but there aren't many occasions where a sudden tune coming from our pocket wouldn't distract those around us. Or worse yet, it leads to our phone being confiscated by a disgruntled employer or teacher. Luckily, there are plenty of vibration options to choose from. You probably have various ones for different occasions and different contacts. None of those settings quite your jam? Apple has a solution to this too. Another hidden feature in the iPhone is creating a custom vibration for your alerts. If you want to feel the beat to your favorite song when your best friend calls or texts, or when it's time to wake up in the morning, you create that pattern on your iPhone. Once again, you'll need to go into those handy settings, then in Sound and Haptics, choose the tone you'd like to customize. Tap Vibration. Then, Create New Vibration. 
The next step is to create those sweet vibrations like a soundless DJ by tapping your finger on the screen until you have the silent rhythm you're happy with. Now you've got a vibrate option to your liking. It might even make the early morning wake-up calls just a little more pleasant. Just like the Beach Boys, you'll be picking up good vibrations. Trackpad With smartphones, we no longer need two hands to use a keyboard. All you need is one good thumb. Yet, it can still prove a little tedious sometimes as typos are easy to make, and all your characters can't fit all at once on that crammed keyboard at the bottom of your phone screen. You might be typing out a long body of text, only to realize you left out the R out of the word drive a few sentences back, which might give your friends the wrong idea about what you're doing. It can be a fiddly task to fix it, and it's often easiest to delete the entire word and write it all over again. Or so it may seem. If you're a stickler for good grammar in your text messages, you might want to shift your keyboard into trackpad mode for easier editing. That's right, another hidden gem on your iPhone. It's easy to access too. All you have to do is hold your finger on the space bar. All the other keys will gray out, and you'll be able to move the cursor to wherever it needs to go. Then lift your finger off the space bar to continue typing. Another tedium to writing on that tiny iPhone keyboard is shifting tabs to use numbers and symbols. It may not seem like much, but it's sure to be a little frustrating when you have to jump back and forth multiple times in the same message. However, there is another hidden feature in your iPhone's keyboard that will alleviate this. Hold it down instead of tapping on the numeric 1-2-3 tab, and it will bring up the numbers and symbols tab. As long as you're holding it, the tab will remain open to pick your character, and releasing will return you to letters. Soon, you'll be fast enough to write a novel on your smartphone. Did you ever tie a string between two plastic cups so you could talk to your friend from opposite ends of your home? It may have seemed pretty cool at the time, but that plastic cup couldn't tell you the weather or let you send an email, right? Indeed, we've come a long way since the string telephone. In fact, can you even imagine life before smartphones? They have become almost like our clothes or the shoes we walk in. It's almost our consistent accessory. Now you know some of these handy secrets, and you'll be an iPhone Pro. However, if these secrets aren't for you, there's always the string telephone. At least it won't run out of charge. Yep, moving objects through a door when it keeps closing is super annoying. So instead, tie a rubber band around the handle on each side of the door so that it crosses over the latch. The latch then won't be able to pop out, and the door won't lock shut. To check whether your bed sheets are fully dried, take a mirror and place it underneath. Leave it there for around 5 minutes, and if it steams up, it means the sheets are still damp. A damp bed can be a breeding ground for mold and other nasty fungi. You can paint the end of your keys with different colored nail polish so that you can easily identify which key is which. In order to pour the perfect amount of oil or salad dressing, poke holes in the foil seal rather than removing it completely. This prevents a big amount rushing out quickly. To prevent band-aids from slipping off your finger, cut a line on either side. This will create four smaller sticky strips rather than one large one, and it will be much easier to secure. If you enter a public restroom and see a red Solo cup someone put under the seat, better choose another booth. It means there's no toilet paper in this one. The red cup is a frequent replacement for a toilet paper hub, which is also put under the seat for the same reason. Speaking of restrooms, almost any public toilet has a large gap between the floor and the door. The reason for such a zero-privacy thing is to actually minimize the level of privacy and comfort so that people won't stay there long and there'd be no lines. It's also to clean and safer if some emergency occurs. Forgot to put your drink in the fridge? Wrap a wet paper towel around it and put it in the freezer. In just 15 minutes, your drink will be ice cold. Instead of filling your purse or wallet with store loyalty cards, you can take a photo of them. Just take one snap of the barcode as well as a picture of the front so you know which card it is. 
Then, when you visit the store, just scan the barcode on your phone to collect your points. If you're using your phone to watch something and are tired of propping it up and having it fall back down, try using your sunglasses. Simply place them upside down and use the parts that go around your ears to hold the phone in place. Now, if you don't have the correct size coin to put in your shopping cart next time you go to the supermarket, you can use your key instead. If you have a key with a rounded end, you can insert that where the coin would go and the cart should unlock. If you're struggling to get your taco shells to stay in place, use a muffin tray. Flip the tray upside down, spray it with oil, and place your tortillas in the gap. Cook them for around 10 minutes at 700 degrees Fahrenheit for the perfect crispy taco shell. You can use a water bottle to separate egg yolks. Hold the bottle over the yolk and squeeze it to suck the yolk up. Drop it into a separate bowl and you're good to go. Next time you're struggling to clean your ceiling fan, use a pillowcase. Slide the pillowcase over each blade to wipe off the dust. This way, excess dust is caught inside the pillowcase and won't rain down on you. To properly clean your blender, fill it with soap and hot water. Switch it on for around 10 seconds and let the swirling water do the hard work. Then just rinse it off and it's clean. Put down a strip of masking tape before nailing into plaster walls. The tape should stop the plaster from flaking or spreading dust all over the floor. If your shoes smell bad, put a few dry tea bags into the shoe. The tea bags will absorb the smell. Try using toothpaste to remove small scratches on furniture. Rub a peanut-sized amount on the scratch in a circular motion until the scratch buffs out. Then wipe it with a damp cloth and voila! Drill a couple of small holes in the bottom of your trash can to stop the bag getting stuck when you pull it out. The holes stop the vacuum-like effect that keeps the bag pinned down. You can easily remove the sticky residue from jars using cooking oil. Soak a cotton pad in some oil, then rub it on the sticky area. Allow it to sit for a few minutes, then it should wipe away easily. Now, you can use hair conditioner to make that new wool sweater less itchy. Just soak it in lukewarm water with a couple of tablespoons of conditioner and leave it for 15 minutes. Then just dry it and your sweater will be much softer. An odor on your fingers can be removed with some minty toothpaste. Rub them together with toothpaste, then rinse them clean. It'll help get rid of the odor and act as a light scrub, too. Now, before you throw out those old sneakers, arm yourself with an old toothbrush and a little toothpaste. Work the paste into the dirty spots and leave it for at least 10 minutes. Wipe it off with a damp cloth and repeat if it didn't do it right the first time. Be careful with color toothpaste, it may leave stains. Washing your clothes on a low heat or even better, a cold wash, will make them last twice as long. Drying them on the line, if possible, will also make the material last longer than if you used a dryer. Metal zippers are very durable, but they'll snag more than other kinds of zippers. Just gently rub a bar of soap over the teeth of both sides of the zipper. The residue will help lubricate it, making it easier to slide open and closed. When you can't squeeze any more toothpaste out of your tube, just cut the end off. This will allow you to get what's left inside onto your toothbrush in a pinch. If there's enough for more than one use, place it in a plastic bag for later. Freezing candles before use can make them burn a lot slower. This will cool the wax right down and extend its melting time. A pack of cotton pads has those strings on it so that we can hang it on some hook or holder. And no, there's no need to untighten and tighten the pack again. Look at the bottom of the pack. It has a perforated line. Tear along it, and now you're good to pull out a cotton pad. If you've ever tasted a Nintendo cartridge, you'll confirm that, yes, they taste revolting, leaving a sour, bitterish aftertaste in your mouth. They're covered with denatonium benzoate, one of the most disgusting flavors known. Actually, this taste is kind of a hidden function. It prevents people from swallowing those cartridges. Headrests in a car are about comfort, and detachable headrests are about safety. If you pull the headrest out of the seat, you'll see two bars, which are quite sturdy. If you ever get locked or trapped in a car, 
you can get out of there smashing the window with these bars. Rough edges on the dimes aren't just about design. The coins used to be made of precious metals to show their real value. People would shave off the edges, spending the shaven coins with the same value, and melt the edges to new coins. To avoid it, minters added that pattern so people could tell if someone cut that coin before. That black grate on a microwave isn't just some fancy decoration. It's called a Faraday shield, and it prevents the rays from escaping the microwave. It also speeds up the heating, so you could enjoy yesterday's leftovers faster. A triple handle on a jerry can is there to make it easier for two people to carry it and distribute the fuel evenly. Gas cans often have a second hole that actually needs to be uncapped, too, before you pour the gas. The air passage will prevent it from pouring out, so no more fuel waste. Tires on the landing gear don't burst because they're designed for a load that's four to five times as great as they experience during landing. The wheel itself might break, but the tire won't burst. This little tip based on people's psychology can help you choose the fastest line at the airport. If there are several lines at check-in, opt for the left one. It's believed that you'll get to the counter more quickly this way. Most people are right-handed and intuitively choose the right side. Your skin usually becomes a bit dry during the flight. This happens because of low humidity levels in the cabin. Bring a good moisturizer with you to keep your skin hydrated on board. Do you know that airplane pilots always eat different meals before a flight? This way, if one of them gets food poisoning, the other will be able to take control of the plane. Airplane tray tables are some of the dirtiest surfaces in the cabin, so make sure to wash your hands frequently. And clean that table with an antibacterial wipe to get rid of all those bacteria living there. If you're sitting in an aisle seat, you can have more space to stretch your legs out. Just push the button on the underside of the outermost armrest. This will move the armrest up, giving you more space for your legs and preventing the armrest from jabbing into your side. Here's a reason why they turn the lights off in the cabin. Passengers need to get used to the darkness in case an emergency landing happens at night. This way, their eyes are already used to the absence of light, which makes it easier to evacuate. Flight attendants ask you to open window shades so they can see what's happening outside. This way, they can choose the best way to evacuate passengers in case of an emergency. Almost all passenger planes are white since this color best reflects the sun's rays and prevents the plane from heating up. Another good reason is that white paint is cheaper. Also, workers and engineers can easily notice any damage on a white surface. It's better to avoid making important decisions during a flight Your brain doesn't get enough oxygen at such heights. This negatively affects its functioning. Chewing gum, hard candies, and mints can help you to avoid this annoying ear popping during takeoff and landing, but not because of the candy itself. You feel better thanks to the process of swallowing. Yawning helps too. As for the gum, it also helps get rid of that bad breath caused by the thin air at high altitudes, which pulls moisture right out of your body. Dry air can make you feel as if you're coming down with a cold. The air in the cabin dries out your nose and throat as if you have symptoms of a cold. These symptoms usually go away right after landing. The water they use to make coffee and tea on board isn't always clean enough. Yeah, many companies use very good water filters now. But still, it's better to ask for bottled water if you're thirsty. That tiny triangle on the aircraft wall over your seat means a lot for flight attendants. These triangles mark the windows through which you can see flashing indicators. Those signal the retraction of the landing gears and the closing of the flaps. Let's say the pilots find out there's some problem. In that case, a flight attendant rushes to the necessary window to check what's happening. But for passengers, this is just the best place for photos, since you can see the wings perfectly. Seats in the middle of the cabin above the wings are the best for you if you have motion sickness. This area is more balanced and shakes the least during turbulence. If you tend to get nervous during the flight, do some physical exercise not long before boarding the plane. A little workout helps lower your stress levels and makes your body release endorphins, the happiness hormones. Also, this physical activity compensates for the hours you spend sitting still. 
The turbines are located under the wings since this makes it cheaper, faster, and easier to service the engines. Previously, they used to be placed in the tail. It required expensive equipment and much more time to repair. When they started installing the engines below the wings, ticket prices went down. Imagine you're flying in a hot air balloon. See the burner system installed under the gas bag, also called the envelope? It heats the air inside, which makes the balloon go up. So, turbulence is the same hot air but created by nature. When the air heats up, it rises a plane. When it becomes cooler, the aircraft goes down. And passengers feel as if they're riding a roller coaster. A stream of hot air left by another plane can also cause turbulence. It's common for most flights, but usually, turbulence is so light that passengers don't feel it. Do you know that planes can fly even after one engine fails? Pilots can control such emergency situations and land the aircraft safely. Passengers may feel a slight tilt during the flight, but in most cases, they don't even know the plane is flying with only one engine. Your eyes get oxygen straight from the air. It's not delivered by the blood. So your eyes can feel somewhat dry during the flight. Put eye drops in your bag. They'll help you keep your eyes moist. It's forbidden to carry large volumes of liquids on board because some hazardous substances can easily dissolve in water. If a plane has to land on water, its wings become a life-saving pillow. Empty fuel tanks help the aircraft stay afloat too. By the way, it can be from 10 minutes to 60 hours before the plane sinks. It all depends on the model, weather conditions, and the pilot's skills. Those smiling flight attendants you meet when you get into the cabin usually hide their hands behind their backs. They're counting people entering the plane to make sure that all passengers are on board. Despite all the words people say about airplane food, it's not actually so bad. The problem is your sense of taste. It's not so acute since the air in the cabin makes your mouth dry. It also dulls your sense of smell. That's why airlines add a lot of spices and salt to their meals. Is it true that your hair grows faster during the flight? Not really. Scientists haven't managed to prove it. This myth appeared in the first part of the 20th century when some passengers noticed that their stubble had grown longer during the flight. It's normal for people to get headaches during the flight, especially right after takeoff. You climb to an altitude higher than Mount Everest within about 10 minutes. These changes happen too fast for your body to adjust. Seatbelts on planes stretch across your stomach to save you from getting slammed against the ceiling in case of turbulence. When it happens, the aircraft starts moving up and down, and your waist belt holds you securely. And seatbelts in cars protect people from horizontal collisions. Airplanes have special protection from lightning. Even if it strikes, passengers won't feel it. Planes are covered with an aluminum coating that conducts electric current, but doesn't let it get inside the plane. Electronics and fuel tanks also have extra protection. Plane seats are so uncomfortable because airlines try to fit the maximum number of passengers on the plane. That's why there's so little space between seats. Two additional rows means 12 more passengers. Also, companies make airplane seats lighter to save on fuel costs. Even seemingly insignificant extra weight can cost an airline thousands of dollars. And by the way, your seat has a fire-resistant coating. It's necessary to prevent a fire from spreading in case of an accident. Airport workers transport unclaimed luggage to special centers. If the owner doesn't show up within three months, the baggage is put up for sale in specialized stores. You couldn't use your phone on an airplane in the past since cell phones were really dangerous for navigation. Their radio signals could disrupt the settings in aircraft electronics. Oxygen masks fall down not only during strong turbulence, but also when the air pressure inside the cabin changes dramatically. Passengers are okay if they put on their oxygen masks, but in such cases are considered to be an emergency, and pilots do their best to quickly go down to a safe altitude so that passengers can breathe without oxygen masks. Ah, uh, you go to bed early to get more sleep and wake up tomorrow morning refreshed and full of energy. Everything goes well, you fall asleep quickly, and your body wakes you up at 3 a.m. You try to go back to sleep, but you can't. Well, here's something to help you. Do muscle relaxing exercises. Straighten your legs, squeeze them together, then relax. Pull your toes forward, hold for 10 seconds, then return them to their normal position for 10 seconds. Repeat this exercise 3 to 5 times. Don't take the phone. 
the screen's glow with bluish tinge blocks the production of melatonin in your body. This hormone reminds your body that it's time to sleep and you feel tired. Blue light eliminates the feeling of fatigue, so you can't fall asleep for a long time. Better to open a paper book. Also, try not to use the phone at least one hour before going to bed. A warm and cool shower will help you fall asleep again. Your body often wakes up from overheating. Use cold water to lower the temperature. Your mind will clear and your body will want to sleep. Lavender tea or essential oil improves the quality of sleep without any side effects. You can even buy a lavender plant so its smell always fills your bedroom. Another great way to drift to sleep quickly is to get out of bed and do something relaxing. Leave the bedroom and enter another room. Read a book or listen to some quiet music. Your brain gets a little activity, which will help your mind to relax again. Also, try not to look at the clock. The thought that there's just three hours left before the alarm ringing can make you upset. The 478 method is a breathing exercise that reduces anxiety and stress. You can do this at any time. Touch your tongue tip to the back of your upper teeth. Exhale through your mouth, letting out a whistling noise. Close your mouth and take a deep breath through your nose for 4 seconds. Hold your breath for 7 seconds. Open your mouth and exhale for 8 seconds. Keep holding the tongue to your upper teeth. Repeat the exercise at least 3-5 to times. Try not to nap more than 30 minutes during the day and do it well before the evening. Daytime naps can prevent you from falling asleep quickly at night. Use this little secret.